Welcome to Hannity. It's Friday night. Tonight, we are tracking multiple developing stories. CPAC is officially in full swing from beautiful Orlando, Florida, you know, the state that actually protected the elderly from COVID and never adopted draconian shutdown measures and is doing so much better than those states that did, like, you know, New York, Michigan, uh, California, etc. We're going to bring you the highlights coming up. Plus, we have an exclusive preview of President Trump's keynote note address coming on Sunday. And later, we will expose the rampant hypocrisy in the Biden administration's foreign policy. Apparently, bombing Syria is now A-OK, -okay, as long as a Democrat is in office. We'll bring you all of this. Plus, a shocking new report is making us wonder, um, who's really in charge at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue? And we'll have Biden's blunders the week in review. But first, if you think the $2 trillion so-called emergency COVID relief package has anything to do with the ongoing pandemic, think again. This is, in fact, the Pelosi-Schumer payoff to all of their political cronies, a $350 billion budget bailout for liberal governors that misappropriated money and taxed people into oblivion, a bridge from New York to Canada for New York Senator Chuck Schumer, a tunnel in Silicon Valley for Nancy Pelosi, billions for social justice issues and green energy initiatives, and, of course, loan guarantees for Planned Parenthood. Hundreds of billions of dollars won't even be spent until after 2022, and other funds won't be spent until 2024. Now, the disgusting Washington swamp, as you can see on your screen at its worst, none of this is emergency COVID relief, period. And make no mistake, only 9%. With this $2 trillion wish list of socialist Democrats, they're just getting started because they're also eyeing a separate $2 trillion green energy bill that socialist Bernie Sanders, AOC, the squad want to pass through what's called the reconciliation process. That's the procedure lawmakers can use once a year to avoid filibusters on budgetary legislation. In other words, he wants to ram it through Congress without any Republican support, kind of like Obamacare. And Sanders is also looking for a way to raise the minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour, again, through the reconciliation process via a brand new tax on businesses. And Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the real Speaker of the House, has another idea. She wants to fire the Senate the Senate parliamentarian who won't allow the minimum wage hike to be part of the spending bill. Oh, so much for that unity that Joe talks about, and so much for the U.S. Constitution, and so much for the idea of co-equal branches of government. You don't even need a legislative branch. Democrats now, they want to ram through their socialist visions with an iron fist. Now, here's the thing. Democratic socialists almost always, remember, are lying to you. They talk about unity. There's no unity. They talk about health care. No, they failed us there, too. They believe in taxes. They're against fracking. They only are I believers, oh, when it fits their political agenda. And, of course, this is also true when it comes to foreign policy. Now, for example, breaking last night, the Biden administration ordered airstrikes in Syria targeting Iranian militias. But when Donald Trump, remember when he was president? Not that long ago. And he ordered targeted airstrikes in Syria. He beat back the caliphate, too. Joe Biden called President Trump's actions, quote, erratic, impulsive decisions, endangering our troops and making us all less safe. In 2017, Jen Psaki, White House communications director, even questioned the president's legal authority for airstrikes, writing, quote, Assad is a brutal dictator, but Syria is a sovereign country. Does she still believe that today? Then Senator Harris also publicly questioned the legal rationale, now Vice President Harris. Apparently, these were all just hollow, empty political smears against Donald Trump. One standard for the Democrats, one if you're a Republican. And according to a new shocking political report, Vice President Harris is quickly being prepped to take the foreign policy reins from the Biden administration. Biden is now reportedly encouraging his vice president to engage directly with world leaders. That would be his job. And by the way, even develop her own rapport with U.S. allies. Harris has also been meeting weekly with Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. 
So the question tonight is why? If Joe Biden is not up to the task, well, we know that he rarely appears in public. We know that he takes very few questions. We know he hasn't even scheduled a joint session of Congress for the State of the Union address. This week, he struggled mightily to read off a cheat sheet. It was frankly embarrassing and hard to watch. And we can all see with our own eyes that Joe is frail, he is weak, and yes, he's struggling cognitively. Even a few dozen Democrats now are trying to take away the nuclear codes from Joe Biden so it's not in the hands of just him, one person. They never even tried that with Trump. And as vice president, now holding one-on-one -on -one calls with other world leaders. So what's really going on here? Who's in charge? And by the way, should we be concerned? You got somebody weak and frail and cognitively struggling. As a matter of fact, here's Biden's blunders, the week in review. I, uh, you know, but the idea that um, over 500, I think it's, I have a card, I carry a card with me every day with the total number of folks who have been affected by the, uh, as of uh, yesterday, there were 500,071 people who have died from this. For God's sake, wear a mask. Go, okay, guys. Thank you. Go. Come on, guys. Go. My mask. Go, okay, guys. Hey, let's go. Go, go, go. Thank you. Thank you so much. Juicy, let's go. Um. All right, joining us now with more, the host of Untold Patriots, revealed on FoxNation.com, Pete Hegseth, along with Florida Congressman Matt Gates is with us. Good to see you both. All right. Now, if you have one position when Donald Trump's president, one view on striking Syria, and Syria, you know, it's they're a sovereign country, Pete, and then Joe Biden does it, it's perfectly fine. It's like everything else that the Democrats do. They're all I believers, but they're dead silent when it comes to Andrew Cuomo. Well, of course, there's only one standard, and it's a double standard in this particular case. Maybe we're lucky, Sean, because Joe Biden hasn't been right on a single foreign policy aspect over the last 40 years. So maybe outsourcing to Kamala Harris is a good idea. How much worse can you do than the worst? But in this particular case, so much of it has to do with the fact that he's not capable. Why would you want him involved in those? And they're grooming her as the left has from the very beginning for that particular position. So the problem is it's all so serious. And the half measures that they're taking pale in comparison to the killing of Qasem Soleimani and the sanctions put on by the Trump administration that actually brought Iran to its knees so we could put them in a place where they don't get a bomb. Now we're bombing buildings on the Syrian border without a real strategy on the Iran deal. It's all foolish. And Joe Biden's absent, and he's wrong. Kamala Harris is front and center. Who's really in charge? We don't know. Sean, but I'd be remiss. I'm sitting right here next to my man, Matt Gates. He gave a great speech today at CPAC. He rocked the house. I got to say it. Matt okay. Gates, is that true? I mean, really? Now, did you let it all out? Or did you go full on or just half measure? I, I'm imagining full on Matt Gates came bursting out. Don't Pete and I look like we're out. having a great time in Florida. <laughs> Sean, we're having the best time. We're not even wearing ties here in Florida. No ties, no wow. lockdowns, no mandates. Just Amazing. conservatives together enjoying patriotism for our great country. You got Democrats in Congress now, Sean, talking about taking the nuclear authorities away from Joe Biden. You've got Kamala Harris taking these meetings with foreign leaders. You have to wonder, has the transition to Kamala Harris already begun? And I mean, I'm watching those clips you just read of Joe Biden. Joe Biden would score below average on the cognitive matrix at like a Florida retirement community. And somehow this guy is the one that's supposed to be running the country. It really begs a lot of questions. And on this foreign policy stuff, Pete is absolutely right. And we have to realize in Syria, what are we really trying to win there? Like, what does America hope to get out of these misadventures in Syria? Uh, I think it's time that we focus on our people. That's the doctrine that President Trump advanced. You know, I'm doing, I know it's Biden's blunders week in review, and, and a part of it kind of, Pete, is a little bit funny. You know, he loses his place. Oh, uh, I, I, I got my card that, you know, um, I feel like he's reading, my name is Joe, uh, my wife's name is Jill, I live at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, because he was looking for a number that we have lost 500,000 fellow Americans to COVID, and he had just had a vigil, I guess, the day before, and he was having a hard time remember the, remembering that number. That's not a hard number to remember. 
and it was slow and it was confusing and he loses his place. It's kind of getting disturbing. And then I watch all this foreign pol policy being conducted by Kamala Harris. And I begin to wonder why. And why isn't there a State of the Union address scheduled? Uh, good question. It's not hard, Sean. It really isn't. It hasn't been from the beginning. Uh, and in this particular case, day after day, time after time, we have examples. I mean, remember the executive orders? You had the cards with the one line written on what they were, and he was reading them line by line while signing them. Who wrote them? What does he really know about them? Of course, the far left is driving this. And you know why it's serious? Is because they're firing on all cylinders in Beijing. The Chinese know this is the time to full court press on their initiatives, whether it's militarily on, on uh, in big tech in their technological advantages. This is serious times. We can't have a guy asleep at the wheel. That's why we can joke all we want. It's not funny because we have real adversaries that are taking advantage of this moment where we're asleep You know, at the I wheel. think about this all the time. Matt Gates, guess what? Putin's a hostile actor. Russian, Russia, a hostile regime. The Iranian mullahs hate us. Joe Biden's trying to get uh, South Korea to hand over $7 billion to the Iranian mullahs. I worry about them. I worry about China. I worry all these hostile regimes. And you've got to believe that they study the American political system. And you've got to believe that they see what every person that I know sees in Joe Biden. And do they begin to think they could take advantage of that? That does concern me. You mentioned the mullahs in Iran. Next week, I'll be introducing the No Cash for Iran Act to ensure that in any re-entry into a deal with Iran, we don't shovel cash at them, that then these proxies and militia forces are able to use around the world when they're shooting at Pete's buddies who are still wearing the uniform. So we need to make sure we stand strong on that. But, Sean, let us not delude ourselves into thinking that this state of intellectual wonderment that Joe Biden is in is somehow stopping the progress they're making. Remember, Hunter Biden's... Uh, lawyer's law partner has been installed in the criminal division of the United States Department of Justice. They are taking Peter Strzok's wife and putting her in an enforcement role when you look at the American financial sector. And I think that the vertical integration of people who are going to hunt MAGA, that should concern everyone. And that is happening, even though Joe Biden probably doesn't know it. All right. I don't know. I know both of you pretty well. You're both friends of mine. Gates and Hegseth in Orlando. Trouble. I don't know. I don't know what trouble, but I just Stay sense tuned. trouble. Somewhere, Stay someplace. Tuned. I'm gonna have to we'll have to we'll have to send some bodyguards down there. Hold Keep bail a, money, Sean. If we need bail money, we know you can wire it. So yeah, just all right. answer I'll, if we I'll, call I'll, tonight. I'll wire the bail money. I'll I'll, I'll be a good Christian. Thank yeah. you both.